need some biblical help and some wisdom in dealing with it. Because I'm a pastor and uh, I believe that I have sensitivity to people, I'm always thinking to myself, I'm preaching to people who've been hurt. And, and these dear people need to forgive even though they've not been asked to, etc., etc. And I'm sure that there are hundreds of people who fit that category here today. But I also have to wake up and realize that I'm not only preaching to people who have been hurt, I'm also preaching to people who have done the hurting. And I appeal to you today. You know what's out there. You know what you have done to others. You know that the other has an offense against you because of your actions and because of issues that you've not been willing to face. Would you please today, by God's grace, take the initiative and say to someone, I have hurt you. I seek forgiveness and hopefully reconciliation. Speaking to everybody today, everybody. Principles number five and six I'm going to lump together. We are talking here about not repaying evil for evil and not taking revenge, and those two are basically the same, so we're looking at them together. The Bible says this in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12. You say, Pastor Lutzer, why should we bring our Bibles to church? I didn't answer that question, did I? (laughs) When you're looking at the text... It becomes more firmly impressed on your mind. And you begin to see that it's not my word, but God's word. And the word of God is then hidden in our hearts. Romans chapter 12, verse 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Even Paul knew said that in some situations it may be impossible. But notice verse 19. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Wow, what a statement from God's holy word. You see, there's something within us that wants vengeance. You say, well, where did that come from? Well, we're created in the image of God, and therefore there is something within us that cries up for justice. You remember in the first murder that was ever uh, committed, Abel was killed at the hands of his brother Cain. And what did God say to Cain? He said, Cain, the blood of your brother cries up to me. God was saying it cries up to me for vengeance. There's something within us that says, where is justice? And it says in Revelation chapter 6, verse 10, that the martyrs say, how long, O Lord, will it be until you avenge our death and our martyrdom on those who are upon the earth. How long, O God, before justice is brought to the situations and the evils that have been done against us. Have you ever cried that? How long, O Lord? You're crying the same cry as the martyrs. We want justice. But notice what the Bible says. Vengeance is God's. Do not repay evil for evil. Don't say, you stick it to me, I'll stick it to you. You hurt me, I'll hurt you. You cheated me, I'll show you. I'll cheat you. I'll get even. You know, I don't get mad. I get even. That's a bumper sticker. That's not God's word. This is Pastor Lutzer. As you think about this business of vengeance and justice, keep in mind that it is okay to want justice. In fact, as I pointed out, God gives us the desire for justice. It's built into our lives, into the whole fabric of the universe. The problem is that oftentimes we cannot see that justice, can we? We can't even the score. And what the Bible is saying, don't try. Trust God to do it. I frequently in my counseling had to say to people, let God even the score. 
Vengeance is mine, I will recompense, says the Lord. Of course, as I frequently point out, we should do all that we possibly can to bring justice to as many situations as we can, particularly when we see injustice in the lives of others. But you and I know that there are so many situations in this world where we can't. Those are the ones we give to God. Jesus did. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. He uttered no threats, but he kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. Give your desire for vengeance to God. My friend today, turn it over to him. Do you have enough faith to believe that the judge of all the earth will do right? Every issue that you and I face will be brought again to the Supreme Court of the Universe. That was Dr. Erwin Lutzer wrapping up part two of his final message from the series After You've Blown It, Reconnecting with God and Others. Tomorrow, more on why vengeance must be left with God. Running to Win comes to you from Chicago's Moody Church to help you understand God's roadmap for your race of life. Our current series is available on CD, cassette, or MP3. Also, it's in print as a Multnomah Life Change book. For full information on getting these resources, call toll-free at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Visit our website at runningtowin.org, and don't forget... This broadcast is supported by listeners just like you. This is Dave McAllister. Join us tomorrow for our next Running to Win.